What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a owl bear. At least that's what I thought I was making. People told me they kind of looked like a like a porcupine or uh someone even told me it kind of looked like a turkey, but uh that's definitely not what I was going for. Anyway, uh yeah, we're going to try and make an owl bear uh, from D&D, the classic uh, forest monster. Anyway, but, uh, that's enough of me rambling. Why don't we just jump straight into it, okay? Cool. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's make a cube and uh, start scaling it down and adding a couple of edge loops, one straight down the middle and two along its left and right, making sure that you have the symmetry modifier on so that your edits on both the X axis are equal. Um, and then start adding a few more edge loops. And basically what I'm trying to do here is rough out a general shape of the head. Uh, kind of like what we did with the cat, but instead of starting with the plane, we're using, uh, we're using a cube as our base point. Um, but yeah, I'm basically roughing out the chin here. Um, I got, an, I think I got a nice little snout going out there by extruding it and doing some basic transforms and just pulling it out along the front two middle planes forward and then back. And now I'm just going to build out the cheeks here by extruding out on the left and right side. Now, what you could do is use some reference images uh, and reference art. That'll definitely help. And frankly, it'll make it more efficient. I'm kind of doing this the lazy way and just kind of messing around and seeing what works and what I'm happy with as opposed to drawing some art and then putting that in the background. But anyway, here what I'm doing is trying to make some ears. Uh, I was going to make, I wanted this owlbear to be a little kind of like, kind of like a mutant thing. So it kind of has like two big ears or like fur, a lot of fur going around its head. But what you can see is, again, it's a ge it's like geometry based. I'm not using the smooth feature and it's a really rough shape. Don't feel, don't get too caught up in trying to make it perfect immediately. You just want to rough it out, block it out basically. Um, the technique I believe is called blocking literally. And uh, block out a nice shape that you're happy with and then go in later to add the detail. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. So I was quite happy with how the, this head was going at first. So generally, at least the shape. He, at first, I kind of thought he'd look like Hiccup from uh, How to Train a Dragon. Um, if Not Hiccup, sorry. Uh, Toothless from How to Train a Dragon. But uh, so that's why, <laughs> probably, that's why I went ahead and started doing a few more edits to tweak it. And obviously, in the future, we're going to add a beak and uh, a few more details to make it look unique. Anyway, I'm um, extruding out there and uh, bringing out the cheeks a little bit more. Now you see me working in the smooth preview feature because I wanted this creature to look a little like a little softer as opposed to like a low poly feel um, with really sharp edges, which is why I turned on smooth feature. And I think that helped a lot in terms of making, uh, in terms of modeling this, um, modeling the shape of the head that I, in the, in the way that I wanted. And uh, yeah, now I'm pretty, ha I'm generally happy and like happy enough with how this head is looking at this point. Obviously, I'm going to do a few more tweaks with some basic transforms. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think what I'm going to do is move on to the body. So again, I'm making another basic plane, uh, making a cube as a rough shape as a starting point. Or no, sorry, this isn't the body. What I'm doing here is the beak. Um, yeah, what I'm doing here is the beak. So I made a cube. Uh, drop the edge loop straight down the middle and then two along the x-axis of uh, parallel to the x-axis and then basically just roughed out this kind of a uh, sharp pointed uh, shape that kind of sharp pointed beak shape that kind of curves down um, yeah and basically I just kind of positioned it where I want this owl bear's beak to be uh, maybe this is what made it look like a turkey <laughs> ultimately but hey I think it looks like an owl bear let me know in the comments below what you think if it looks like a Turkey, maybe I'll do a new one if it does. Anyway, yeah, I'm just doing some basic transforms here to fit the beak to the head a little bit more where I left the snout. Um, and now probably what I'm gonna do is duplicate it and then make the bottom part of the beak. So obviously I'm gonna take the same asset and just basically scale it scale it down so it looks like it's more of a, a lower jaw type of thing as opposed to making something brand new. You could easily just do that, but I was kind of lazy that day. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. So I think we got a decent shape for a head going. What I'm doing here now is actually making the body. And I knew what I wanted this owl bear to be massive. Like I wanted, I wanted the owl bear to be like a brick, like this big hulking monster, which is why I make this huge cube, turn on the smooth preview so that it's kind of like a softer rounded shape. Cause I wanted to try and strike a balance between cute and kind of like scary at the same time. So, which is why I went with the softer kind of rounded edges as opposed to the harsher low poly feel. 
you can very much easily do this in low poly. But anyway, so what I'm doing here is you see me making the general shape blob of a body. I know it doesn't look, it looks really weird at this point, but trust me, we'll add more edge loops. And we'll, uh, we'll do a few more transforms to make it look a little more appropriate. But here I was extruding out the neck area so that it looked like it connected with the, the head a little bit more because I knew I wanted his back to be a little more rounded, kind of like a humpback uh, in a way. So I was just kind of tweaking out the, the back and the nape of the neck here, just to, just doing some basic transforms to make it a little more, uh, to make it rounded in a nicer way. Um, yeah, again, honestly, I'll be straight with you. This I was just kind of messing around here trying to get a rough shape that I was happy with. And once I did that, I would add, I knew that I would start adding detail. There, what I'm trying to do is basically bring in the edges of that rough shape so that it looks a little more natural when I extrude out the legs. Um, because I wanted the legs to be very stubby and I want the owlbear's arms to be very hulking and big, kind of like it, almost like it carries itself with its arms because it's so, it's so beastly. Um, so I, I kind of, kind of uh, roughed out generally where the thighs would be. And then I'll probably extrude down here to just pull out some little, really small, um, legs. Um, I felt like the smooth pre preview feature there was messing up how my extrude was going. So I had to smooth it out in geometry mode and then extrude out again, um, just so that it looked a little more appropriate. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm gonna about to do here. I'll extrude down and make the legs, probably pull it in a little bit so that it doesn't look like he's got such a wide stance. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I felt like that looked pretty cute in terms of uh, just a general rough shape of how I wanted the legs to be kind of like, kind of like, kind of like he has like really small ankles and really thick thighs. Uh, again, all I'm really doing is just using basic transform tools, you know, scale, rotate, position, all those things, as opposed to like making new assets and then adding it using the Boolean cut and all that stuff. I'm really just working off a single cube and kind of like molding it that way. Here, yeah, again, here, I'm just kind of rounding off the bottom plane. Um, bottom edges so that it makes more of a foot like a like a flat foot kind of shape as opposed to that weird triangular thing we got going there and here I'm pulling in that edge loop to make it to imply where the ankle is and where the knees are uh, yeah again this character is super stylized so I wasn't too concerned with how with the <laughs> with how uh, anat anatomically correct it was uh, now I'm extruding out the arms. Uh, so I just selected some faces at around where the, I knew the arms would be and I extruded that out. And then I just tweaked the uh, edges so that they kind of shape more of the tubular, make a more tube arm shape. And then I'm just going to extrude out again here to uh, create the forearm basically. The, uh, or no, actually the shoulder and then the forearm. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just tweaking out the chest, again, roughing out the shape as we go. Like I said, start with a rough shape and then mold, smooth it out as you go through. Like, don't get too caught up trying to make it perfect immediately. It's not gonna be perfect. So don't be afraid to kind of start with something really ugly and then trust the process that it might turn out pretty decent later. Um, I always say like, it's gonna look ugly until it stops looking bad. You know what I mean? I don't I think most of you who do this kind of stuff will know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, okay, cool. So basically, sorry, enough rambling. Uh, right there, I tweaked around the body because I kind of wanted the owlbear to look like it, again, was dragging itself forward with its front feet. So I needed it to be very much lean into its upper body, which is why I tweaked the top, the, the entire body to kind of um, angle in that way. And now I'm just fixing up the arms to make it look a little more massive and kind of hulking um, so that it looked like it could carry the weight of this monster. In, in, in reality, I think, I believe the scale, I believe the scale of this thing is maybe like 20 feet. Like this thing is huge compared to my character models. But yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna extrude down one more time at the arms to create where the hands will be. So basically the arm is made out of three components. It's the shoulder, or four components technically. The shoulder, the, f the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. And that's important because when you rig it, um, basically your typical bone structure will be shoulder, upper arm, or bicep, lower arm, hand, and then fingers if you add it. 
Um, so just try and keep that in mind when you're modeling. Try and make sure you apply edge loops. You have edge loops at those joints so that when you deform, it looks a little more natural and it's not like pulling a single plane out like crazy. Anyway, um, at this point, what I'm doing is tweaking again the body so that it looks, again, I'm just tweaking it so that I f it looks more natural in terms of how I want his stance to be, um, his or her stance. Actually, I had never really assigned a gender to this one. Um, although I've told in nature that typically the mother is quite huge compared to, um, compared to, uh, like other animal species, like bear and bear, female bears are massive because they have to protect their young. Anyway, that's a bit of a weird ramble. Um, here I'm tweaking out the groin area a little bit, uh, fixing up the legs so that they look like they protrude out more appropriately from the hips. Um, and then I'm giving her a bit of more of a pot belly kind of thing. I thought it was kind of cute. Um, and yeah, I think I was getting pretty much, I was pretty happy with how these, um, how this body was looking. I was just going to do a few more tweaks here and there to make it basically look really, really hulking, but I was pretty happy with how it was looking at this point. You know, um, I wanted the arms to look very furry and fluffy. Um, so I'll add fur, fur in the future. So what you're about to see here actually at this point is the video is going to cut because I accidentally uh, didn't record all the all the all the footage that I needed. So I went back and re-recorded this part so that you could see. But basically this is how I made the feathers and the fur for the arms and the back. I took a cube, I scaled it into a rectangular shape and then I added edge loops down the center and then along the X and Y axis. And then I started using the target weld feature to target weld the top vertices to the middle vertex to make this pointed uh, triangle shape. And then I started rounding it off by basically pulling out the center vertices between the planes. Uh, and basically I was doing that to round off this geometric shape so it looks a little more uh, uh, cylindrical. And then I'll add one more edge loop here, bring it down closer to the bottom face, and then scale down the face to round off that bottom. To basically, again, it's all to round it off. And so when I put this into smooth preview, it looks a lot smoother and it looks more like a, kind of like the hair assets we make whenever we're, whenever I was doing my characters. And so basically all I'm going to do now to create that fur around his arms and the, her back, I keep switching between his, hers, it's back, is uh, basically positioning the first asset where I want it to be and then just duplicating and then doing the basic transforms of rotation, position, and scale to, again, um, position the next fur piece up on the arm so that it almost looks like it's layered. And basically that's all what you're just going to watch me do at this point. So I'm again, duplicating, positioning, rotating, uh, duplicating, positioning, rotating. At this point, I felt like I could start adding a little more, um, layers to it. Um, and in order to kind of mold the fur around your base model work in vertex mode, and transform the vertices only. That way you are able to very be very specific with how um, the, the fur molds around your arm. And again, it helps, it really helps being in smooth preview mode for this um, as opposed to geometry. But again, if you wanna do this low poly, you can absolutely do it that way as well. Now I'm just gonna take the same asset, bring it to the back there, um, and basically scale it huge along the X axis, and then just position it along the back but on the back along its right, on the, along its left side. And then just again, do what we did with the arms and duplicate a couple times, rotate and position the back fur in a way that looks like it's uh, fitting, looks like it's coming out of its neck. Um, and then I'm gonna do it again one more time to make a second layer. The reason I'm only doing this on one half actually is you, you'll see it in a minute, is once I am happy with how the fur looks and I, have, I feel like I have enough layers. I'm gonna combine all the uh, fur pieces into a single asset and then just mi mirror it onto the opposite side. Um, and there you go. So now I'm selecting all the assets that I want to combine. Um, it took a couple tries, but yeah, combined and then use mesh mirror on the opposite side so that you get the perfect symmetry of that, that asset. But yeah, okay, cool. So I think I'm just gonna cut it off here because there's not really anything else for me to kind of tell you in terms of how I made this character model. Um, yeah, again, it's just taking the fur asset, duplicating, doing the basic transforms and positioning it along the arm so that it basically makes kind of like how the fur you want it to be, kind of, kind of wrapping around the character. 
And uh, yeah, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, let me know down below what videos you want to see next. Um, yeah, okay. So thanks for watching. I will talk to you guys in another video. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.